When it comes to Bitcoin and inheritance planning, there's a lot to consider. While some go for multi-sig solutions, eliminating single points of failure, they can be difficult to set up on one's own and even more difficult for your relatives to claim down the road if you're not there to help them. Others opt for collaborative custody, still multi-sig, but having a trusted third party hold one of your keys in case anything goes awry. This is attractive, obviously, in that your relatives will have some help along the way. However, with all of these solutions up to date, it has required extensive KYC. So you're giving up all your personal information to get these things set up. And some people are uncomfortable with that. Well, that is no longer the case with Nunchuck Wallet's latest offering. They now have an assisted multi-sig setup in which you don't need to provide any private and personal information whatsoever. Today, we're gonna dive in to how you can set up your own collaborative custody or assisted multi-sig with Nunchuck. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we dive in, shout out to sponsors of the show, CoinKite.com. These guys just have the best damn hardware in the game. I love my cold card Mark IV for securing my stack. Uh, the amount of features on this thing are, it's just, it can't be touched. It's beautiful. Um, but they've got tons of stuff over at the CoinKite website. They've got things like the Open Dimes, the Block Clock, the Sats card, the Tab Signer, all of this stuff. Uh, and I've just got a ridiculous amount of it and I love it all. So be sure to head over to coinkite.com and you can use code BTC sessions at checkout for 5% off everything in the store. Up next, we have Start9, your sovereign computing solution. I've done a full tutorial on how to set this up and run your entire Bitcoin stack, running Bitcoin Core, your Lightning node, things like Mempool and Join Market, and all these other great peripherals to have your Bitcoin self-sovereign. But they're not just good for that. You can host your own data as well and get it out of the hands of corporations. You can host your passwords, your files, your photos, all of that stuff. And you can do it with your own hardware and not have to worry about a honeypot of your information sitting out there on the internet. Um, check them out, start9.com. You can check out the Embassy One or if you're looking for something really beefy in high-end uh, hardware, check out the Embassy Pro. Uh, up next, if you're stacking sats, if you're buying Bitcoin and you have some priorities in and around peer-to-peer -peer transactions, non-KYC, not having to give up your information, and direct self-custody, HODL HODL has you covered. Uh, super easy to sign up with nothing more than an email address, and you can be trading peer-to-peer -peer in no time at all and buying with no KYC. Uh, so that's awesome. And beyond that, they also have their lending platform. So if you're looking to do some lending, whether it be with your Bitcoin or with your stable coins or whatever you may have, um, well, you can do that and it's not rehypothecated. Uh, and that's kind of the key. You don't want your Bitcoin sitting in the custody of another. Uh, so you can hold it here and it sits in an escrow and uh, much better than, than having things uh, rehypothecated because you never know where it's going to end up. Uh, so yeah, HODL HODL, these guys are awesome. I have a link down below if you want to sign up and start playing around. If you've never bought non-KYC Bitcoin, I think it's time to at least give it a try uh, because again, you never know. You don't want a huge honey pot of your information out there. So check out HODL HODL. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, you don't want to have to worry about fire damage, water damage, all that kind of stuff to, happening to your seed phrase. That's a nightmare. I've heard horror stories. So get it backed up in solid steel. And the bill foddle over at privacypros.io, this is how I typically back up all of my stuff. Uh, it's awesome, it's robust, it's resilient, and it gives me that peace of mind. So I don't have to think, uh, what if there's a fire? No, as I'm set with my bill foddle. So check them out, privacypros.io slash BTC sessions for a little, uh, a little bonus at checkout. Um, and with that, let's dive into the show. 
So at the gate, let's start with prerequisites. What are you gonna need to know in order to dive into this video? Well, today I'm gonna be using three different devices, uh, mostly just to showcase some of the options that you can use with Nunchuck in this assisted multi-sig setup. One of them will be the tap signer from CoinKite. And the tap signer is a must use in this situation, given that it is your dedicated inheritance key. And we'll get into what that means later, but uh, I do have a full video on how to use the tap signer and set it up if you have not done so already. So if you need to check out how to set up your tap signer, go back, watch that video and, uh, and, and get that set up first. Uh, secondly, I will also be using the Cold Card Mark IV. I have a full video tutorial on that. Now the Cold Card Mark IV is not a necessity to be used in this multi-sig setup. You can use all tap signers if you so choose or other devices that are supported. Uh, but if you wanna see the Cold Card, go check out that video as well in the show notes. And then finally, I will be using the Blockstream Jade, which is used uh, air-gapped with scanning QR codes, all that kind of stuff. Um, I will link to uh, my latest Jade video down below. Now, at the time of recording this video, that video is not up to date yet with how to use the air gap function, which I guess you'll learn how to do it regardless in this video anyways. Um, but if you're unfamiliar how to generate a QR based key. Um, you can also check out my seed signer video, which is supported in Nunchuck as well. Uh, and it will show the process of how you use that device to create and transpose a QR based key. So all the resources will be over there. You can check that out. I also have a full video on how to use Nunchuck, not in the context of inheritance planning. So Nunchuck can be used on its own as just a regular hot wallet or a wallet that manages cold keys or uh, your cold storage and your own multi-sig setups. So if you're curious about that, my other Nunchuck video will be there. Um, but this video will be focused solely on the inheritance planning aspect and the product that they offer through that. So uh, yeah, go ahead, check out those other videos. All those resources will be listed down below if you're unfamiliar with anything I've spoken about. In terms of multi-sig, I've got explainers on that. Uh, maybe I'll add the link to all of my multi-sig content there if you wanna see uh, and compare and see how Nunchuck functions in that context. But with that, let's take a look at what Nunchuck specifically has done with their inheritance planning. So this is the how it works section of the Nunchuck website explaining how their inheritance planning uh, assisted multi-sig works and, and kind of what they're addressing. And I wanna highlight a few things. So um, we're gonna be using the Honey Badger option, which is, uh, which is the more robust option. Um, and it is a two of four multi-sig. So just in this little diagram here, we see the way that it's set up. Effectively, there is there are three keys that you will manage yourself. In the instance of what I'm doing in this video, it'll be a tap signer, a cold card, and a Blockstream Jade. Then there's a platform key, and this is a key managed specifically by Nunchuck Wallet on their servers. The way it works is one of your keys, the tap signer, is going to be the dedicated inheritance key. And that one is not to be used for day to day. Uh, if you've watched my tap signer video before, uh, you'll be familiar with recovery of how you recover a tap signer. And it's a combination of a file that you can create, download and save, and a password or a decryption key that's on the back of the card. And if you have the file and the decryption key, you can put those together to recover your private key and all of the funds therein. Now, Nunchuck capitalizes on this in a way where they don't compromise your key and they allow you to also back up the key to their server by taking the file, but not the decryption key on the back of the card. And so this inheritance key effectively is hosted on their servers in a way where they cannot access the key and move your funds. Um, and those secrets or the file and the decryption key to access that particular key in the multi-sig are bestowed upon 
your beneficiaries at a later date. And we'll get into seeing what that looks like in practice. Now, the other two keys, again, they are part of the multi-sig and you use those to sign transactions yourself. Um, there will be, and we'll see this in practice, but there will be a threshold that you're comfortable with being able to spend day to day only requiring one of your keys and the platform key, the key that Nunchuck actually holds and can use. You must use one of your own keys to sign a transaction along with the platform key that Nunchuck holds. So they're just uh, you know, one of the two signatures. So if you set a threshold at $1,000 and you say, I, I can only spend $1,000 per day or per month or whatever the time threshold is, if you're spending under $1,000 in that day, then you can just sign with one of your keys, like the cold card, and then Nunchuck will automatically sign with their server key, and that's enough to be able to send the transaction. They cannot send a transaction by themselves because they only have one key that they actually have access to. Um, if you're sending over your cap, over your daily threshold or monthly or whatever you set it to, it will require two of your keys. And that would be in this instance, the cold card and the Jade, because those are our regular keys. And the tap signer is the inheritance key, which is not advised to be used day to day for regular signing of transactions. So you kind of keep that off to the side um, in a safe location. Nobody touches it. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the general setup here. You have three keys. Nunchuck has one and an encrypted backup of another. All right. Uh, and at any point you can spend below your threshold with just one of your keys and the platform key that Nunchuck holds or above your threshold with two of your keys. In a pinch, you can use the tap signer as one of your keys. It's just not recommended to regularly be using it. All right. Hopefully that's clear, but we'll dive into it as we see it in practice. Now, a few things here, again, the inheritance thing is kind of front and center with what they're offering here. The way that they've set it up um, is is very unique and, and to me is a simple recovery method for the average person that may not understand. And again, we'll get to see it, but um, I do think what they're doing here is very unique. I've not seen it before and I feel like the average person could figure this out and they're walked through every step of the way anyway. So um, yeah, it's, it's very unique and uh, I'm glad that they've taken inheritance and put it front and center. Um, so a few of the features here, again, relatively easy onboarding, I've got to say. Uh, they've got cloud backups of your inheritance key. Um, again, you've got lots of layers because you're using multi-sig, the inheritance planning aspect of it, and they do have in-app chat support. So if you're, you don't know what's going on or you're trying, you're confused with anything, you can just send them a message and they will get back to you. Um, they have features like emergency lockdown. Uh, they've got, again, I was mentioning the spending policy so you can have a spending limit per day or whatever you decide. They do have scheduled payments. Um, and the big one here, this is the main thing I really want to focus that sets them apart is the privacy aspect. Because as I said, other options on the market, yeah, you've got kind of the peace of mind of having um, somebody that can help your family members if something happens to you, but you're also giving up all your private information and you know your identity. But with Nunchuck, that is not the case. Um, you can sign up with nothing more than an email and password. And the email in question doesn't even have to be one that identifies you. You can have a an email that's a private one that nobody knows you have that is specifically for this. Furthermore, they're gonna be implementing the ability to sign in with a private key as well as part of this. So um, again, I, I think this is incredibly valuable for those of you that worry that there's a, uh, there could be a honeypot out there of information where somebody could find out how much Bitcoin you have. If you don't like the idea of that, this might be something that is for you without trading off the, uh, you know, the additional help for your family members should something happen. Um, so yeah, that's more or less it. That's kind of the summary of what they're doing here. I think 
all we need to do is just start diving in and see how this works in practice. So let's do that. Okay, so what I have in front of me here is my mobile phone with Nunchuck loaded up. Uh, I have my tap signer. I have a Blockstream Jade with a private key on a QR code. Uh, we're going to be using this in QR code mode, um, one of the newer features of the Jade that they've implemented. Uh, and the QR code, funny enough, actually, I actually created this from the Seed Signer. So showed it to Seed Signer, who's doing some awesome work. And then finally, we've got my Cold Card Mark IV that we're going to be using in NFC mode for this. So again, three devices, I guess four, including the phone, but Tap Signer, Jade, and cold card mark four and i've also got the cold power here that'll be powering the cold card with we've got another cable that we'll be plugging into the jade so this is pretty much what i've got uh, let's take a look at how we're going to import the keys from these devices so that they can be part of our multi-sig quorum so when you sign up for the Honey Badger uh, account, you would do this either through um, email address and password and on the website, uh, pay through there, at which point it will be associated with your login and you'll see this wizard, or it will be associated um, when they implement it via your dedicated um, primary key, which in most cases would be something like a tap signer or whatever it may be. Um, nonetheless, when you do sign up, you'll see this start wizard up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. It says, welcome, let's create an assisted wallet. We'll walk you through the entire process to get your multi-sig wallet set up. It will take a few minutes, so find somewhere private, make yourself comfortable, and let's get started. You'll need an active internet connection, of course. We're going to hit continue. Okay, and then there's going to be four steps here. Add our keys, set up our security questions, create a wallet, and then set up an inheritance plan. So we're going to start with adding our keys. We'll hit start down below. So... It is required that the inheritance key be a tap signer. All right. So these things, if you haven't seen how to use them again, I've got full tutorials of it, as I've said plenty of times before, um, but very simple, very affordable. And that's going to be our inheritance key. And that's what we're going to add right now. Very simple to do. Now it says here, let's add your keys. We'll just read through what it has. Uh, your new wallet will be a two of four multi-sig wallet. Two keys are required for spending. You'll have possession of three keys. The fourth will be held by Nunchuck on our secure server. Among your three keys, select one key to be the inheritance key. It must be a tap signer. The rest of these can be any uh, combination of any other devices that they uh, support. So they could be tap signers as well, or they could be in our instance, the Jade and the cold card. They have other devices that they support. I imagine more will be added. You can check their website to see what you can use with Nunchuck. Uh, but first let's add our tap signer. So we're going to hit add. Okay. Your inheritance key. This tap signer will be your designated inheritance key. Once you have set up an inheritance plan, a beneficiary or trustee will be able to recover this tap signer's private key at a later date to access your wallet and claim the inheritance. Please take a moment to mark or label this key. All right, we're going to hit continue. Add tap signer. It's a wireless NFC smart card and will sign transactions with a simple tap of your phone. On the next screen, place and hold the card as close as possible to the NFC chip in your phone, which I should say will vary depending on the phone. I happen to be on a Google Pixel. Uh, please make sure you hold it there until there is success notification. If you're unsure where the chip is, please refer to your phone's manual. So you can look this up online really quick, but I know mine kind of is center, uh, kind of like up in this region here. I'm going to hit continue. All right, ready to scan. So I take my tap signer. I'm going to hold it at the back. All right, I need to enter the pin for my tap signer, which I'll do off screen. Once my pin is entered, it says ready to scan. Okay, place that again. I'm gonna hold it near the device until it's finished. Okay, we've now added our tap signer. Key number one is finished. Hardware key number two 
we're going to dive into using the jade all right so i have my jade plugged into power alternatively you could just turn it on um, you don't need to this thing does have a battery in and of itself uh, but i have it plugged in right now and you have the option of initializing or using the advanced features we're going to do the advanced because we're going to use this kind of in air gapped mode as if it was just not plugged into anything and we're going to be utilizing a private key a test one that i've made with the seed signer here which you can also make with the jade um, and we're just going to scan that to import our private key for this session now again um, if you want to dive into how to actually make these keys and and use more of the jade i'll i'll link to uh tutorials that can be helpful down below um, as they come out i do still have to cover the new features on the jade at the time of recording this but um, if it's been some time you may see that uh, i quickly add a tutorial in the show notes uh, either way i'll link to resources that can help you along with that but what i'm going to be doing here is i'm going to scroll and click on advanced then I'm going to choose out of these options, pass a uh, recovery phrase a login. Okay, do you want to temporarily log in using a recovery phrase? This doesn't affect your pin uh, saved wallet, if any. All right, so we, had, we don't have anything uh, set up on this device as is. So I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to say yes. Okay, how would you like to recover the wallet? Scan QR or something else. So we're gonna hit scan QR. That's gonna open up the camera. And then I'm just gonna simply hold the QR within a view and it should pick it up. Okay, perfect. So we are now uh, using the Jade with uh, this private key and this private key is going to be part of our multi-sig quorum now the next option says how do you want to interact with your jade in this case we're going to be using qr um, if you're using it with a computer or whatever you would select usb but that is not the case here so we'll click that and move on and that will get us into our main screen here and so what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of get ready to export our information to our nunchuck wallet. And the way we do that is we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to XPUB export. Now this will automatically load up the single SIG export, but we don't want that. We want the multi SIG. So we're going to make sure we highlight options. We're going to go down to single SIG and tap it once to get multi-sig and then just go to the back arrow and we can now see it says multi-sig and the information is ready on the screen for us at which point we can grab our phone we can go to add hardware key number two now what time uh what type of hardware key do you want to add it's you can see designations for tap signer cold card we're going to say air gapped we're going to add air gapped key Okay, initialize, initialize the device key, follow the vendor's instructions on how to set up your seed, uh, your device with a seed phrase, unlock the device. You might need to enter a pin or passphrase directly. Okay, continue. All right, and now we see import via file or scan QR code. We're gonna scan QR. We'll allow it to do so. And we'll hold up the jade and allow this to scan. All right. And so we can see it imports all of the information from the Jade and we're gonna hit add key. Perfect. So we are not fully done with the Jade, but we are done with the export option for now. So we can just, I'll put my phone down here. So we can go ahead and we'll just back out of this and get back to our main screen here and we can move on. I'll put the Jade off to the side here and now we're gonna move on to the cold card. So we have already put in the pin on our cold card, it's initialized, uh, but we're gonna to defer to Nunchuck first uh, as they will guide us through the process with the cold card. So I'll bring up my phone again here, zoom out a bit. Okay, we're gonna add hardware key number three. So we're gonna hit add, which type, we're gonna grab the cold card and then it 
gives us the option via NFC or via file. So you can export a file to an SD card, plug it into your phone, so on and so forth. We're gonna use the NFC function for this example here. So I'll choose the top. Okay, it says initialize the cold card, uh, unlock the cold card. So we've done both those things, enable NFC, and I already had my NFC enabled. Again, you can go back to my tutorial if you don't know how to do that. Will I continue? Okay, so on the next screen, bring your phone as close as possible to the cold card's NFC chip, which is centered around number eight on the keypad. Okay, and then it'll say, on cold card, go to advanced slash tools, export wallet, generic JSON, okay, zero for account, and press three. So we'll walk through that right now. So here we are going to go down to advanced slash tools. And let me zoom a little bit here. So all the way down to advanced slash tools, we're going to go to export wallet. We're going to go all the way down to generic JSON. And then this just kind of tells us what it's what it's doing here. Uh, file created is sensitive in terms of privacy, so on and so forth. So don't share it with anybody, blah, blah, blah. Continue from there. Nothing for the account number. We're just going to leave that. Generating. And at this point, it says press three to share the export file over NFC. And that's what we want to do. Otherwise, if you want to do the file, you just hit the check mark and it will put it on your SD card. But we're going to do NFC. We're going to hit three. It says, hey, looks like we can now use the NFC function. So I'm going to lie it flat here. We'll grab the phone, which is ready to scan. And we're just going to place it. And look at that. Cold card has been added. So at this point, we're now ready to set up the platform key. And the platform key is the key that is going to be residing on Nunchuck's servers. So for the platform key, I'm gonna hit configure. It says, what is the Nunchuck platform key? This key will be managed by a secure server. It automatically cosigns transactions based on the policies you will configure in the next steps. So I'm gonna hit continue. Now, Cofigure the cosigning spending limit. The platform key will only cosign transactions if the total amount spent has not exceeded the spending limit. So the cosigning spending limit right now is set to the equivalent of a thousand USD. You can change that as you see fit. You can change it from USD to BTC to SATs. You can change it to a daily limit, a weekly limit, a monthly limit, whatever you kind of see a yearly limit even. Um, so you can basically configure this as you see fit. For demo purposes, I'm going to leave this as is. Should be fine, I'll hit continue. Okay, configure broadcast and delay policies. So you can hit it so it automatically broadcasts a transaction after co-signing, or you can enable a co-signing delay. A co-signing delay gives you time to detect errors or unauthorized access before a transaction is broadcast. So if somebody somehow got a hold of one of your keys and your multi-sig quorum and got into your nunchuck designated account and tried to do a transaction, there would be a delay of your choosing whatever amount of time you decide where you would notice a pending outgoing transaction at which point you could then lock down the account or, or basically tell Nunchuck, yo, this wasn't me, so please don't sign this. And then it would not be broadcast. So you have that, that uh, you know, degree of security there, even in the event that some of your keys are compromised. So, you know, a nice little feature there. So I'm going to just, for, again, for the purposes of this, I'm going to hit uh, automatically broadcast. And we'll hit continue. So we now have all four keys, tap signer, our Jade, our cold card, and the platform key, and we can hit continue. Up next, we're gonna set up our security questions. I'll hit continue. 
Set up security questions. The key recovery procedure helps you recover the tap signer's private key in case of loss or accidents. Fill in the security questions and answers below. They will be used to prevent unauthorized access to key recovery. Answers are case sensitive. So you would go, you'd select a uh, one of the preset questions or you can create your own question and you're gonna have three of these. So I'll go through, I'll set a few of these and, uh, and then we'll move on from there. Once you've set your security questions, you can go ahead and create your wallet. So we'll hit continue and we're gonna give the wallet a name. We'll call this one test honey badger and continue. Now it says, please register this wallet with your cold card. You must register this wallet with your cold card before you can use it to sign transactions. Basically what this means is we need to tell the cold card that it's part of a multi-sig so that it even knows what it is signing. Okay, so we're gonna hit export wallet to cold card and we're gonna export via NFC. It says on cold card, it tells us exactly where to go in the menus. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll put this down for a second. Go to our cold card. So we're just gonna X back to the main screen here so we can go all the way through. So we're gonna go all the way down to settings. Then we're gonna go to multi-sig wallets. Then we are going to go import via NFC. We can lie this down. We can take our phone, which is ready to scan, and we're just gonna place it as before. Data transfer and process, keep holding your device near the cold card. All right. Now, on the cold card here, it says create new multi-sig wallet, wallet name, test honey badger. So it looks like it did transfer appropriately. And then policy is a 204. Two signatures from four possible co-signers will be required to approve spends. And then it says what type of address is, derivation path, press one to see extended keys or okay to approve, X to cancel. So I'm gonna hit okay. And we have now saved the quorum, perfect. So the cold card, I'll X back to the main screen, is now capable of signing transactions in this multi-sig quorum. I can put this down. Now it says, please register this wallet with your air gap device, referring to our Jade. And again, what we're doing is we are telling the Jade, hey, you are part of a multi-sig and allowing it to scan uh, the multi-sig quorum so that it knows what it's signing. So once again, we're gonna hit down at the bottom, this time show QR code. Now it says the options are export to Keystone, Seed Signer, or Jade, or export to a passport. So obviously we have the Jade, we're gonna hit export. So we have a QR code, an animated one, that we can now scan with our Jade. On the Jade itself, all we're looking for is the scan button. So we're gonna scroll over one, we're gonna hit scan, and I'm just gonna turn this Okay, so on the screen here, we see that the multisig has come up and we can tap to the right to see the information that was imported. And so uh, this gives us the fingerprint derivation and XPUB. Uh, we'll move on. Again, signer two of four. So you see signer one of two, uh, two, sorry, one of four, two of four, three of four. It'll break it down for us. Uh, all of the information for each one of those. All right, fingerprint and XPUBs. All right, so there's all four signers. Then it says, do you want to register the money, uh, the multi-sig? And I'm gonna hit the check mark. So now the Jade is set up and can scan and actually approve transactions for this multi-sig quorum. Once you've successfully imported to your Jade and it can sign transactions, you get this message, congratulations, your wallet has been created. For best security, please keep your keys stored in physically distributed locations, AKA don't have them all sitting at home together because then everything that's needed to move your money is in one place and kind of 
doesn't really make sense if you're setting up a multi-sig to do that. We're going to hit continue. All right, finally, set up an inheritance plan. So I'm going to hit continue. The Nunchuck inheritance plan allows you to safely pass along your Bitcoin to your loved ones while not affecting the security of your day-to-day -day wallet usage. Before we begin, here are some definitions. Beneficiary, an individual who will inherit your Bitcoin. Trustee, an individual who will help manage and distribute your Bitcoin to the beneficiary. The inheritance plan can be claimed directly by the beneficiary or indirectly through a third-party trustee. Continue. Plan overview. The inheritance plan will have these main components. A backup, oh, sorry, a magic phrase, a backup password, and an activation date. We will now go through them one by one. Here's your plan's magic phrase. Your inheritance plan is uniquely identified by a magic phrase. The phrase can be used to look up your plan later. Make note of this magic phrase. You will need to share it with the beneficiary or trustee. So you would make note of these three words. After jotting these down and keeping them in a safe place, you're going to hit continue. Find your backup password. In your wallet, you have designated tap signer to be the inheritance key. An encrypted backup of this key is stored on our server. On or after the activation date, the beneficiary of or trustee can recover this key using the backup password printed on the back of the tap signer. It must be listed under backup key. Make note of this backup password. You will need to share it with the beneficiary or trustee. So again, on the back of your tap signer, there is a special code. Again, if you watch my tap signer video, you would have been privy to that. Nonetheless, I'm not going to flip this over right now, but effectively, you're going to make note of that backup password, uh, which it is referred to as the backup key on the actual card. And you're going to keep that somewhere safe as well. It's important to note that the file on Nunchuck servers is effectively useless without that key written down. AKA uh, Nunchuck cannot move your funds with just the backup file of the tap signer. They need the decryption key that's on the back of this card as well. Continue. All right, inheritance key tip. The inheritance key is designed to be used exclusively for the purpose of inheritance. The tap signer designated as the inheritance key should be locked and put away in a safe place until it is needed. For day-to-day -day spending, we recommend that you use the other keys in the wallet. So this is not going to be used all the time to be spending. This is specifically to be used for the inheritance. Continue. Set up an activation date. Only on or after this date, a beneficiary or trustee can claim the inheritance. You can change the activation date anytime via the services tab. Please note that once a date has been picked, any date change request will require two of your keys to sign off. So you can change the date, but you require at least two of the three keys that you've set up to change it. All right. So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to set it uh, relatively near. So I'm recording this on Monday, January 23rd. So I'm going to set it for the following day. So 01 24 2023. And actually, I guess they convenient. I'm glad I didn't have to type that out. They just have the, uh, the calendar here. So I'm going to set it for tomorrow. I'm going to hit OK. All right. Well, I continue. Now, would you like to leave a message after the beneficiary or trustee claims the inheritance? They will be able to see this message. So you could leave a note and again, kind of a unique way to uh, leave a message after the fact. But uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. Enjoy the sats <laughs> and we'll just hit continue. You can skip this step if you so choose. All right, notification preferences. On the activation date, would you like us to notify the beneficiary or trustee of the inheritance plan? If so, please provide an email address. Okay, so um, 
I think this is a good step to include. Uh, and you can have this uh, go out to multiple email addresses if you see fit. Uh, but I'm going to have this go out to like my website email. So contact.ca. Okay. All right. And then we can say also notify them today if they want to, you want them to know that they're part of this inheritance plan. Uh, if you decide that, and then you can hit continue or I don't want any notifications. So I hit continue. All right. Review your plan. Activation date tomorrow. <laughs> Magic phrase. These three words, backup password. Uh, and then it's printed on the back of the key. Of course, they're just telling you to make note of that. And then the note to the beneficiary. Enjoy the sats. Hit continue. All right, two signatures required. To authorize these changes, two signatures are required. You'll be asked to sign a dummy transaction that sends 10,000 sats or $2.29 to your own wallet. The dummy transaction uses a fake input and does not move any of your real Bitcoin. It will not be broadcast and will be immediately removed afterwards. So we want to sign a dummy transaction. We're going to choose what we want to sign this with. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sign cold card with NFC. So I'll hit sign. And then on the cold card, we're going to go to ready to sign and then press three and then we'll tap to sign. So cold card. The very first option is ready to sign. So I'm going to check that cold card is ready to sign a spending transaction, put the propose onto the SD or press three to send a uh, PSBT using NFC. So as they told us, we can just hit three. NFC turns on. At this point, I take my phone and I'll simply tap. Okay, so the cold card is telling me, hey, um, do you want to sign this transaction? Uh, it gives me all the information about it. If I so approve, then I'm going to hit check mark. Uh, I'll just scroll down to the bottom to make sure there's no anything else. Okay, we'll just hit check mark. Okay, and it says us we would it would like us to scan again, and it says it's ready to scan on my phone. So once again, okay, we can now see that our cold card has signed the transaction. We need one more signer and we're actually going to utilize because I would like uh, to be able to utilize the tap signer to make sure that that key is working just fine. So I'm going to do that for one of them, um, even though typically this is designated again for only the inheritance, but I just feel like checking this key. So I'm going to hit sign with the tap signer. First, I'm going to enter the pin. And now our phone says ready to sign, hold the device. All right, your inheritance plan has been set up, continue. So it says share your secrets. The magic phrase and the backup password must be shared with the party or parties eligible for the inheritance. Please select your option, direct inheritance. The beneficiary has full control over the inheritance upon the activation date. They can claim the inheritance for themselves. Option two, indirect inheritance. A trustee has full control over the inheritance. Upon the activation date, the trustee can help the beneficiary claim the inheritance on their behalf. And option three, joint control. The beneficiary and the trustee have joint control over the inheritance. Upon the activation date, the beneficiary and the trustee will need to combine their secrets in order to claim the inheritance. So you do have plenty of play here with how you do this. I'm going to go with the direct inheritance. So there's no trusted third parties involved. It is the family member claiming this. I'm going to hit continue. Okay. It says, these are the two secrets to share with the beneficiary. The, magics, the plan's magic phrase, which is the three, uh, three words, and the backup password for the encrypted backup, which can be found on the back of the tap signer designated for inheritance. All right, so the key on the back of this device. All right, at this point, I'm gonna hit done. You can review this information again 
by navigating to services view inheritance plan. I'll hit got it. There we go. Everything step one through four is completed. I'll hit continue. And there we go. We now have our wallet set up. So we have test honey badger sitting right there. We have the tap signer, our hardware key, which is our Jade and the cold card. We can rename hardware key to Jade if we so see fit. Um, but now we have the full set being able to navigate our wallets as we see fit. And uh, we can test sending into and out of the wallet as well as claiming the inheritance once the time comes tomorrow. Okay, so let's go through some general navigation here now that we have everything all set up. Up top, you're going to have your wallet that you've created. This is your assisted wallet um, with the multiple keys assigned. You can see you have a, a Bitcoin balance, a dollar equivalent. You have a label that says assisted, and you also have a designation that says it is a two of four multisig. Down below, you're gonna have your various keys. So you can see the tap signer, our hardware key, again, which is the Jade, and our cold card. Now keep in mind, the fourth key, as we said before, is hosted on Nunchuck servers, which they have control of, which means they don't have the ability to move their funds, but they are able to act as a secondary signer when you need them. Um, if we Take a look down at the bottom. You can see a few tabs there. There are wallets, services, which is exactly what we're using, the uh, assisted wallet, uh, messages, which is encrypted messages between you and other individuals that you add as contacts within the wallet. I'm not gonna be covering that here. And then your profile, which has to do with your Nunchuck account. Now, how we interact with the wallet is we tap on it itself we see a whole new screen here and I'll give you a breakdown of what's there. Once again, we see two of four multi-sig, it's assisted. We have a balance in Bitcoin and dollars below. Um, we have our send and receive buttons and then it says you don't have any transactions yet, which would typically show here. Uh, and then it shows a receiving address. Now you'll notice my receiving address, this is in testnet reason I'm using testnet right now, of course, is I'm going to be using this later to actually secure my inheritance. Uh, but um, for now, we're going to be using testnet coins. And I'll leave some uh, resources in the show notes in regards to how to actually use uh, testnet or how to obtain testnet coins. Uh, nonetheless, we have an address here which can be scanned, or you can hit the copy button to paste it into a message so that somebody else can send you funds. You can also hit share and that will open up applications in which you can share your address. Uh, if we hit view wallet config, we get more details. We can rename it with the little edit button here. Uh, we also see the member keys, tap signer, cold card, hardware, which is our Jade and the platform key. And we have our policies in and around the platform key, which we can view. We need to enter our password our nunchuck password in order to do that. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that for now because we already saw those settings when we set them up. Furthermore, in the top right, we hit the three little buttons and we can export our multi-sig quorum as a QR code. We can export it for cold card or we can force refresh uh, if we want. So the QR code would be, again, let's say you wiped your Jade or you're using it uninitialized as we are now, you would scan this QR code again to re-inform it that you are dealing with a multi-sig quorum so it knows what to sign. And if you happen to get a new cold card and need to re-export this, well, there you go right there. And force refresh would just be if transactions aren't popping up, well, you can hit that button and it'll refresh the wallet and check for any new transactions there. And that is pretty much that. Um, we're going to now send some coins to this wallet so that we can practice sending out and see what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to get some test net coins into this. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my address here. Uh, at this point, normally this would be when I send that address to 
uh, somebody that's sending me coins or to another wallet where I can paste it in and send funds over to my multisig. Uh, however, I'm right here on a Bitcoin faucet, a testnet faucet. This is where you can get testnet coins to play around with. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna paste in that address there. Okay, so we have just sent some testnet Bitcoin over to Nunchuck. We can check it out. Um, so I'll jump over here and uh, again, if we want, we can go to view wallet config and we can force refresh. Okay. And so we see an update with a, an incoming transaction of a 0 0.00006 Bitcoin. Uh, and so, you know, it's a very small transaction for about a dollar. 37 but nonetheless we have a test amount coming into the wallet so that we can see how it functions and how we can sign to then send out uh we're also i'm going to grab a, a couple other test net transactions from other faucets just so we have a bit of a balance here to work with um, and then we can do some experimenting Okay, so we've now received a, a handful of testnet transactions. So I've got a, a balance here in the wallet, which I can now use to test sending out. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be sending out a single transaction that is below our threshold of daily sending. And so what that means is... Uh, under that, and we set it for $1,000. So under that $1,000, if I go to send a transaction, I will be required to use one of my keys. And it's typically uh, encouraged that you only use the, the two additional keys, not the inheritance key for this. All right, so use either the cold card or the, the jade in this instance. And that will be one of the signatures. The other signature will come from the key held on Nunchuck's servers. And it will automatically sign the transaction if it is below the threshold we set for daily expenditures or whatever your time horizon is. Um, if it's above that, then it would require two signatures, one from each of your other devices. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, again, we set our threshold to $1,000 a day and it, um, it automatically broadcasts afterwards. Those were the settings that we set. Uh, there is no transactional delay that we put. So pretty much as soon as we sign it, it should go off right away. So we're going to go into our Honey Badger wallet. We're going to hit send. Uh, and then I'm going to use the scan button. I've got a, a testnet address up on uh, my computer here, so I'll be able to scan that. So I'll just open this up. I'll grab that address really quick. There we go. Okay, so address detected. Please enter amount. And I can enter either a Bitcoin amount or I can switch to USD. So we'll just do like a, a 20 USD transaction. Okay, so I'll hit continue. And then I can add a note um, and I'll just call it testing. Okay, so we're gonna hit, uh, at this point we have the option, we can create the transaction or we can customize the fee settings. So if I go into that, then I have uh, options like uh, subtract from the fee amount or manual fee. You can uh, use replace by fee later if necessary. So I can go and put in a manual fee rate and I can choose and it lets us know hey here's the rates right now priority standard economical um, so that gives me options here I'm not actually going to use any of these right now I'll just go back and we'll just hit create transaction so at this point, it says, hey, it's pending signatures. I need a signature from one of my devices. Now, of course, if you're in a pinch, you can actually use the tab signer. It's not advised because that is your, uh, your inheritance key. Um, I would advise using the non-inheritance keys for this instance. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna sign with the Jade, all right? And, uh, and then we'll, we'll see what that looks like on here. Um, and actually, I've... I've since unplugged the Jade and plugged it back in. So we'll see what it looks like uh, in air gapped mode 
to scan our, our key as we did before, and then where to go to find the multi-sig quorum so that the Jade knows what it's signing after having set it up previously. Okay, so here with the Jade, I'm gonna go to advanced. I'm gonna go to recovery for a lo phrase login as we did before, and then says, do you wanna temporarily log in uh, with a recovery phrase? We'll hit yes. And then do we want a QR or do we wanna put in the words? We'll scan the QR as we did before. And I'll do a quick scan here, processing. And then uh, says, how do you wanna interact? We're gonna be using QR. Once we're logged in, again, we now need to tell the Jade, hey, what am I signing? Because right now, because we just scanned the key, uh, the QR code, it does not know that it's part of a multisig. So we have to inform it of that situation. So we're gonna do that via our uh, Nunchuck multisig wallet and export that information there. Within Nunchuck, uh, we're gonna go view wallet config. Um, we're gonna go to the top right, and we're going to hit show as QR code, and we're gonna choose export to Keystone Seed Signer Jade as QR code. This animated one comes up on the Jade. We just go to scan, and we scan the animated until it fully enters into the Jade. Once we've successfully scanned, it will jump back to our main screen and the multi-sig has been imported so we can interact with it now. So the Jade is ready. And then here within our wallet, we can just hit done scanning. So from the signing screen, we're gonna select hardware key, which is our Jade. We're gonna hit sign. And then we're going to export it because we need to tell the Jade what we're doing. We're going to export to Keystone Seed Signer Jade. This brings up another animated QR code on the Jade. We once again select scan and we scan the QR code that's on our phone. We're now presented with the transaction. Hey, this is where you're sending Bitcoin to uh, and this is how much. So we can hit the check mark. This is your fee. We can deny or hit the check mark. And this is our finished transaction here. So we're gonna put the Jade down now. Let's take a look at our phone. And underneath, we can see a button that says import signature. We're gonna tap on that. That opens our camera and we can scan what's on the Jade. All right, and that was quick. As soon as it scans, uh, right away, it gets a platform key signature and it sends automatically. That's the settings we, we des designated when we initially set up the wallet. So we can see it's already pending confirmations. It has gone off. Um, if I X out of that transaction, uh, we can see that transaction right here for around $20 plus the fee. Uh, so there we go, more details. And we see again, estimated fee, total amount, where it went to, all of the details are there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that would be an example of a spend below our threshold. But what if we want to spend above our threshold? Now, obviously we don't have that amount of money sitting in our wallet currently, but uh, we, can lower our threshold to see what that looks like. So we'll take a look at what it takes to lower your daily spending threshold or whatever, again, your time frame is, and then we'll try sending above that threshold momentarily. I also wanted to clarify something in and around the balance here. So some of you may have noticed, hey, there was like just shy of $700 in there. You sent $20, but now it's dropped significantly. What, what happened there? Well, that actually has to do with the change that is unconfirmed. So if you're familiar with UTXO management, um, you would know that if you take uh, that Bitcoin sits in your wallet as as basically pieces of Bitcoin, kind of like in a regular wallet when you receive cash, if you get a $20 bill, a 10 and a five, those are separate amounts sitting in your wallet until you spend them and then you get change back from 
that transaction. Same thing happens in a Bitcoin wallet slightly differently. I won't get into the details, but nonetheless, there was a large bill used in this transaction. So we can actually see that if I tap on the transaction and I go more details, we can see, well, I sent this $20. There's a fee, but then down below it says, hey, change address. And there's about $440 worth of change that is coming back to me. But in Nunchuck, that will be shown uh, once it confirms on the blockchain. All right. So you can actually see within the transaction what's going on. Okay. Yes, I'm getting change back from this transaction, uh, but that's the discrepancy. And as soon as there's a single confirmation, then it will be reflected. And actually, there we go. We got one confirmation. And now look, the balance is 671. Okay. So if you're wondering about uh, balance discrepancies there, click on the last transaction you did and uh, just be aware of that's what it's reflecting. Okay, so let's change our um, our threshold for daily spending. And we're going to go to View Wallet Config, and then we're going to go to Platform Key View Policies. This will prompt for your password, which is your Nunchuck password that you previously set up when you created your account. All right, on this page, you have platform key co-signing policies. You have your spending limit and your co-signing delay. Uh, and so we're going to edit this and we're going to drop it down to $100 so that we can spend above and beyond that. Maybe actually let's drop it down to 50. 50 US dollars daily. Drop that down and we'll say update spending limit. And then we're going to hit continue to save changes. We're not going to change the automatically broadcast. Um, we're just going to go continue. And then it's going to ask you one of your security questions in order to update this change. Now, this is different from what you would do if you were raising the spending limit. So if you're if you're lowering it, you just simply answer a security question. If you're raising it, you actually have to sign a dummy transaction with your keys to ensure it's not somebody just trying to raise your limit uh, with nothing more needed than a security question. So I'm going to answer this and we'll jump to the next screen. And it dumps me back, says policies have been updated. We can now see that reflected here. If I jump back, everything is as normal. And now we can look at doing our test transaction above our $50 threshold. Okay, so we've got both our keys here ready to sign when we need them. We've got the cold card and the Jade. Let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna hit send. Again, I've got a, an address up on the screen that I can scan, so I'm just gonna hit the scan button. Alternatively, uh, you can uh, you can actually paste in an address after you put in uh, your amount or you can hit send all you can do whatever but uh, yeah you can scan direct from here as well so address scans how much are we gonna send we'll switch to USD and I'm gonna say I'm gonna send a hundred dollars continue Okay, so this is where it's going. Again, we'll just say test, create transaction. Okay, so it says now it's pending signatures. We need two. And then under platform key, it says daily limit reached 50 US dollars. So that means this key isn't going to sign for me. I need two of these options. So again, in a pinch, the tap signer could be used, but again, not recommended. Keep that segregated by itself and rely on your other two keys. So we're gonna use the cold card and the Jade. So first we'll do cold card, we'll hit sign. We're gonna export the transaction. Again, it tells us the steps to go to in order to sign this transaction. So if I grab my cold card here, again, we just use ready to sign. And if you scroll down, there's also a dialogue that tells you press three to do it via NFC. So we're gonna do that. That brings up our NFC screen, at which point we can simply tap. Okay, so ready to import signature. So now we're waiting for the cold card to read that transaction. It says, is this okay to send? It gives us how much we're sending, 
where we're sending it to. We can scroll down, see all that information as well as our fee. We'll hit the check mark. All right, and then it says it's ready to scan via NFC again. This will send the signature over to our Nunchuck wallet. Okay, it now says signed. By the way, if you lose contact with the cold card or something happens where you get an error, simply just hit sign again and then tap a second time and hold it there until it's officially transferred all the data and it should work out just fine. All right, so cold card is done. It's successfully signed via NFC. Now we're going to use our second hardware key, which is the Jade. We'll hit sign. We're going to export the transaction to the Jade and that will bring up this QR code. On the Jade itself, we go to scan, and we're gonna scan what's on our phone. On our Jade, it shows us where we're sending to, how much, and what our fee is, and we approve. And that gives us the finished transaction. Over here in Nunchuck, we're gonna import the signature now and scan what is on the Jade. Okay. Now at this point, we actually get the two signatures ready and instead of automatically sending as it did below our threshold, it gives us all of our details. It shows our two signatures and it says ready to broadcast. So it has all the signatures it needs, but it's not been sent to the network yet. Um, we do see member keys, there's enough signatures collected. And then down at the bottom, there's a broadcast transaction button, which we're gonna hit now. And off it goes. So we now see the balance updated. Again, we see the, the discrepancy in terms of balance here, but uh, if we go into the transaction itself and more details, we can see the allocated change address here and that should, uh, that should confirm shortly and then accurately reflect our balance. So this is the email that you can have automatically sent to the beneficiary of your inheritance plan. So they'll see a Bitcoin inheritance plan has been activated. A Bitcoin inheritance plan has been activated at the following time on Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. If you are the beneficiary, please follow the instructions for claiming. And then you can click on this button and it will walk you through what to do. So you need to have your magic phrase and backup password ready. This might be with the beneficiary or uh, distributed between them with a trustee as well. However, you had set it up as we discussed. So you're going to have those two things. You're going to need to download the Nunchuck app. The claimant should sign up for their own account separate from the owners. Okay, so we're going to have to create a different account this can vary. It could be a dummy email address. It does not have to identify you in any way. It can be done anonymously if you see fit. Uh, then you sign into the claimant's account on the mobile app, navigate to the services tab and tap on claim and inheritance. Follow the instructions for claiming. The original subscription has uh, expired more than three years. A maintenance fee of 0.1% of the wallet balance will apply. So um, if the person uh, had subscribed and created an account and they basically hadn't kept up with it for a few years or something had happened where they just didn't pay and didn't let anybody know, well, uh, it's going to be a small fee. Um, I, and I say that's pretty reasonable if the person hasn't kept up with uh, the inheritance plan. So you would still have access to the funds in question. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do these steps. So let's dive in. Okay, so I am on a different old phone that I had kicking around. I downloaded Nunchuck Wallet. I'm going to navigate into it and uh, it will ask you to sign up initially. I bypass that um, as somebody might do. Uh, but if you do navigate to services and you see claim and inheritance there and you tap on it, it's going to jump you back to the sign in screen. So nonetheless, we're going to sign up with an email address here and then we will go into actually claiming our inheritance. 
Once you've put in an email address and gone to the next screen, they will send you a temporary password, which you're gonna put in and then replace with a new password, which you confirm and then hit change. Upon changing the password and then being prompted to sign in, you'll be bumped back to the main screen here. It's then that you can go to services and claim inheritance. So you're gonna see, uh, please enter the magic phrase and backup password. So my magic phrase consisted of three words. They were blade, family, and nice. So I'm gonna put those in now. And you can see it auto fills as you're typing. Nice. Now the backup password was the string of digits on the back of the tap signer. And remember, this will be used to decrypt the key that is held on the server, um, which is useless to nunchuck until uh, this decryption happens, um, at which point you can then claim the uh, file in question and be able to sign uh, half of the transaction. So I'm gonna put in this backup password and once I've done that, I'm gonna hit continue at the bottom. Okay, so at this point, it now populates and says your inheritance is this much Bitcoin and it gives me an amount and says, congratulations, you have unlocked your inheritance. You have a message below and this was the one we set up initially, enjoy the sats. And then we have the option to withdraw the balance. So we're gonna try that now. Now, it's gonna say we can sweep to an address that we control or we can withdraw to a nunchuck wallet. Now you don't have a wallet yet, we will create a single, single, a single SIG wallet for you to sweep into. All right, I'll hit continue. It gives you a new seed phrase and it says, take a moment, write down the seed phrase. It's the backup for your key. So I'm gonna write that down off to the side here. Once written down, hit continue and it's going to confirm your seed phrase by showing you a few words and you tap on the corresponding correct answer and continue. All right, and then passphrase. It asks if you want to set a passphrase. It adds another layer of security to your key. You will need to enter the passphrase every time you sign using your key. You can think of this as a 25th word of your seed phrase. Passphrase is optional. Now, I'm not gonna enter one for this. It would be up to the beneficiary if they want to do so. I'm gonna hit I don't need. All right, this will save a wallet configuration file. Nunchuck always does this because you can create your own multi-sigs and all that kind of stuff and export them to other wallet softwares if you see fit. Um, I'm just gonna say I'll do this later. And then we're gonna say, which are we sweeping the wallet into? We're gonna choose the one we just created. It's the only one there. We're gonna hit continue to sweep. Congratulations, your inheritance has been claimed. Got it. Okay, and so it's now pending confirmations. We can even view it on a block explorer if we wanna see it on the blockchain. And that will open it with whatever browser you see fit. I can X back out of this. We see a pending transaction that is coming into the wallet for around $570. Um, this is a single signature hot wallet sitting on this device. Now, if the person, the beneficiary had wanted to, they could have swept this directly into an address that pertained to, um, uh, some sort of a cold storage device that they already have custody over. I think it would be ideal if you're setting up somebody, um, to be a beneficiary that they, you maybe spend the time teaching them about how to manage wallets and everything. And then when they get to that step, they will have the option to send to whatever wallet they see fit. They don't have to be in the nunchuck ecosystem if they decide not to be. Um, and so it gives that, that choice at the end. But nonetheless, we've successfully claimed our inheritance into our own custody in a totally separate wallet. And this could have been done with, a, again, a dummy email address. It doesn't have to really be 
um, anything that identifies me. And the same was true of the person, myself, I guess, who set up the, uh, the inheritance plan in the first place, all of this done without any identifying really anything. And just hopping back over to the original wallet that is sitting uh, on my phone on behalf of the uh, setup, the person who set up the inheritance plan, we can also see that transaction having been sent out of this wallet. And if we tap on it, we get all of the information here, the details, um, you know, everything, where it was going, the fee. We have all of that data here um, and we can see that again, our inheritance has been claimed. Now, what if you want to go and change your inheritance plan in any way? How do you go about changing all of that? It's actually down in the bottom here under services. Uh, after it's initially been set up, you'll see all of these options below. So you can have an emergency lockdown, which would lock down the key that sits on the server of Nunchuck so that it couldn't be used to cosign. Uh, key recovery is there. You can view the inheritance plan and this is where you would make changes. So you'll be prompted to put in your Nunchuck password first. And upon doing so, you'd be bumped to reviewing your plan on this screen. There are edit buttons in each little part so you can change the activation date. Um, it'll show you the magic phrase and backward password, all that stuff. Uh, you can change uh, how you're doing this and what the steps they recommend in order. So we did direct, but you can change the how you share your secrets there. Uh, you can also change the uh, message, um, the the email address it goes to, the notifications, all of that stuff, and you can um, change all that and set it down below. Also up top right, you can also cancel that particular inheritance plan if you see fit at any point. If you go back here, um, the claim inheritance button is there. Uh, the co-signing policies that we've seen before is there. That's like your threshold and all that. You can order new uh, hardware through their website. Um, you can roll this over into a new assisted wallet if you choose, and you can manage your subscription, which will take you to the website as well. So all of that is just available in the services tab down below. Now, the wonderful thing about Nunchuck is that, yes, we have an assisted setup here that we've done. We've, you know, imported all these keys and everything. And so we've got a multi-sig, but I've done videos on Nunchuck before and you still have access to everything that this wallet can do outside of this assisted setup. So what I mean by that is you can have hot wallets, you can have single SIG hardware devices that are single SIG wallets on here. You can create multi-SIG that are not assisted as well and you can manage it all from the same interface. So just as an example, if I wanted to uh, create a new wallet and have my cold card as a single signer, I can do that. So I can go to wallets, I hit plus, I hit create new wallet, I give it a name, we'll just call it CC for now, continue. Well, what key do you want to use? We have keys here that can be used. Well, I'll use the cold card. Continue. This is our setup. Continue. And there we go. We have a single signature cold card wallet now available to use as well. And this acts just as a regular wallet. You can receive Bitcoin to it. You can send from it. All you would need is a single signature from the cold card. No restrictions, no thresholds, nothing. It just functions as a regular cold card interface. The same would be true of creating a hot wallet. We'd of course have to create a key. So we can add a software key, create a new seed. We'll get this, we're gonna write it down. It'll confirm it for us. Jumping ahead, we're gonna hit continue. We'll answer the questions and hit continue, give it a name, let's call it hot, and then do we want a passphrase? We're not gonna set that up right now. Okay, so we have a new key, we hit done, and then we're gonna create a wallet with that key. We've got a hot key, create new wallet, we'll call the wallet hot, continue. What keys do we wanna use? And again, we, this could be a multi-sig. Um, 
As a matter of fact, let's make it a multi-sig. We already have a single sig cold card uh, and we'll make it a multi-sig with our hot wallet, our hardware, which is the Jade and the cold card. We'll hit continue. Oh, wait. Required keys. How many keys are required out of the three that we've selected? We'll say two. So it's a two of three multi-sig. There's no um, assisted signer for that. Hit continue. There's our uh, old kind of summary of everything. Hit continue. And then you can save your wallet configuration, which is important to do in multi-sig. And then we would, again, it goes through the steps of, hey, you register the multi-sig on your devices. We go through the scanning of QR codes and everything like we did with the original setup. I'll do this later for now, but I'll hit done. And hey, look, we've got a hot, <laughs> bad name for it now that it's a multi-sig, but you get the point. You can create keys, you can import keys from devices, you can create hot and cold wallets and multi-sig wallets all alongside your assisted multi-sig. And so this becomes your interface for effectively everything that you need all in one place while also having that nice assisted inheritance plan set up that we used at the beginning. So if you're curious about any of these other functions, cause I kind of blew through them here, go back and check out my old Nunchuck video, uh, which I'll link in the show notes down below, because again, this wallet interface, when combined with what we've just seen today is, is a beast, I've got to say. So I want to take a moment now and kind of lay out how I think of this and, and kind of my personal recommendations, which could vary based on uh, other people's thoughts, but um, how to approach this setup and, you know, where, where do you want to keep your keys and, and what are some no-nos, so on and so forth. Okay, so in this situation, you would have three keys, right? You would have your tap signer, which is the inheritance key, and then you would have two other devices. There's a lot of redundancy there um, in that those devices also would have backups, right? You would, you would have some sort of a, a written backup for your cold card and your Jade, um, or, you know, you perhaps even also have the backup file uh, of your tap signer as well outside of the multi -sig quorum, I mean like not even held by Nunchuck, but like you can have that file as well when you initially set it up. Um, so there is a lot of redundancy there. Given it's multi-sig, uh, I would say that it's not a huge deal to have the device and the backup seed together in the same place. And what the caveat that I'll put with that is if it's, in metal would be ideal for the seed. So there's, again, like there's like seed plates and there's, you know, lots of different solutions in terms of how you store that seed and you can put it in metal so that if there was a fire in one location where the device and the seed phrase were stored, while the seed phrase, you can actually decipher what it was from the metal backup. Um, so it's not too bad to have seed and device together in one place and also, given that it's part of a multi-sig with just that single device or that single key, there's no indication that it's even part of a multi-sig. So somebody couldn't even decipher that it was because they don't have enough pieces of the puzzle. Now the keys themselves in a multi-sig, you always want to geographically disperse them. Okay. So that means you don't want to have two of these keys sitting in one location, like at your home, because in a five dollar renter tax scenario somebody breaks into your home and says give me all your bitcoin they can you know look they make you pull out your phone and you look in your app balance and all that kind of stuff um and then you have both keys to move all of the funds above your threshold in the same location that's bad do not do that so um you know if you're gonna have one of your keys easily accessible that's okay um, and it's below your threshold that you'll be able to spend as long as you set that threshold. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would definitely geographically disperse all three keys, your tap signer and whatever the two other devices are. So whether that be, you know, in a safe at your house, at a family member's home for one of them perhaps, in a, in a, a vault somewhere, like a safety deposit box, you know, buried in in a in a 
I don't know, some sort of a tin in your in like wherever, um, whatever you decide to do, whether it's family members homes or safety deposit boxes or just different hiding locations that you may have, just get those keys not in one location. Each uh, each key is in a different location and you should be good. Um, the other thing I will say is during the initial setup, there's um, a, a file, a backup file of the whole multi-sig. It's called a BSMS file. So it showed a notification, hey, you can back it up now. I would recommend that you back it up and you keep that file somewhere. And, uh, and what this does is, if something happens to Nunchuck, um, first of all, the app will continue to function on your phone. So you'd be, you be, know, if, if something happened, you can still use the app and move your funds with the keys you have. Um, however, if you wanted to, if you have that BSMS file, you can import that into other interfaces. So you can import it to another wallet, another wallet interface that supports uh, multi-sig and then you have full access to your funds. You have three of the keys available and you only need two of them. And you can then move your funds using an entirely different interface. So just keep in mind that that file is important in that it's kind of like the map to your money. If you misplace that map and Nunchuck no longer exists, which you know there's two things that you have to worry about and you delete your app, so three things really nunchuck goes down you delete the app and you haven't backed up the file and kept it anywhere in that nightmare scenario you would need all four keys from the multi-sig to recreate it and you wouldn't have it because nunchuck is gone so if you want that extra insurance um then download that file and keep it somewhere okay uh and i will also say the only thing that somebody can do with that bsms file if they come across it, if they find it, if you backed it up somewhere on a, on a drive or if it was in cloud storage, if somebody gets a hold of that file, the worst they can do is audit and see how much Bitcoin is held in that multi-sig. So it's a privacy issue, but it's, a not, it's not a security of funds issue. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's kind of the long and the short of it is disperse your keys, and get that BSMS file and just keep it somewhere. Um, back it up wherever you see fit and just keep in mind that it's, it's, uh, it's privacy centric, but it's not uh, an issue if somebody gets a hold of it in terms of losing funds. Now, the other thing I'm gonna say is you are to bestow your secrets upon the beneficiary or the trustee that is responsible for divvying up uh, your inheritance. What I would, what I think would be best is regular check-ins with the person that has that information. So let's say you just do a direct beneficiary inheritance plan and they have uh, the, 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 the words, the three words, and they have the, the key or the, the decryption key, the password. Um, check maybe on a yearly basis. A phone call saying, do you still have the package I provided to you? Do you still have this information? And don't just say, do you have it? And then they're just on the phone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I got it. No, they, they go and they physically check the location where it is and make sure it's still there. Um, having that peace of mind would be good. Uh, and it just makes sure that everything is hedged. You could have more than a single copy of that if you so please. Um, kind of up to you, but I, I would say just regular check-ins with the individual, making sure that they still have the information, the pertinent information. The other aspect of this that I think is important to, con, uh, to touch on is the length of time that you set your inheritance plan for, because you can move that forward if you need to. Why I say this is because if you have an inheritance plan that is set really far into the future, let's say, let's say you set it out a decade or two decades or something like that. Um, but then let's say something unfortunate happens to you. There's an emergency, you, you know, you pass away and then your family 
doesn't know where the other two keys are that you have access to. And they just have the inheritance information that you gave them. That means your family is now stuck waiting for a decade or two for that money to be unlocked. I think the best solution here is to set a threshold um, for the inheritance to trigger perhaps a year to two years in the future and then set reminders for yourself a month prior to those triggers uh, to bump it further out. So maybe two years, you set it for two years and then a month prior to that, you know, that expiration date, um, you go in, you're still okay, you're still breathing, you go in, you bump it another two years. You, you don't need to be advising your family that you're doing this, but you can then keep bumping it. And then if something does happen to you, it's, well, maybe they're, they're waiting a year, maybe they're waiting two years at maximum, um, but that's not as bad as being stuck for a decade or two after something bad happens to you. So consider that you can, as I said, go and edit all of that information within Nunchuck, and that just kind of hedges you against any um, unfortunate thing happening to you. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's a good way of covering yourself. So I've got to say I'm pretty happy seeing what Nunchuck has put together here um, from a variety of aspects. First of all, I already loved Nunchuck wallet as is, right? With just the, the free offering of being able to manage hot and cold keys and multi-sig and, and just kind of the versatility of that setup. Also things like being able to connect to your own node, which we didn't touch on in this video, but it's in my other Nunchuck video. There's there's a lot of great things about just the, the core offering of the software they, they put together. Um, but this inheritance aspect and this assisted multi-sig aspect, having that peace of mind and something in place that can trigger and allow your family members to get access to your Bitcoin after your passing, something that assists them through and shows them step by step what they need to do with relatively little information. They don't have to protect a lot. The idea that you could incorporate a trustee or just go direct to the beneficiary, the idea that you have actual you know, ass assistance and chat and backups and various aspects of this, the ability to change things as you see fit, um, and the fact, and this is the, the best part to me, and the number one thing that irked me about options out there thus far was the privacy issue. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen what an adversarial government looks like, and it's always a worry of, well, what happens when there's a turn on a dime and everybody's got to hand over their Bitcoin and um, somebody goes to these companies and says, all right, let's see, let's see who signed up with you. We need names, we need amounts, we need all of that. What happens in that instance? Well, your savings are doxxed, unfortunately. Um, not so in this case. And I love that. I think it's the one thing that was missing from this type of setup. You know, I, I want my family to have some assistance if something happens to me. I want, you know, a helping hand and some assurance that they'll be able to get their hands on, on, on things down the line. But at, at what cost? What are the trade-offs? And up until now, it was, it was privacy. Well, again, that's, that's not the case anymore. And I think that's huge. And from my experience going through this, I, I think it's entirely doable. I think the, the, the recovery process or the, the claiming of the inheritance is not difficult and it's triggered via email. Like they, they get a set of instructions directly to them. Um, and I think with the assistance of you with your family, just saying like, hey, this is how a Bitcoin wallet works. Just, just as simple as that, showing them what it looks like of, you know, the, the 12 or 24 word backup and just kind of showing them, oh, this is how you do a transaction. If you can show them those basics, then all of a sudden when they jump into actually retrieving an inheritance, even without that help, but with that help combined, uh, 
it's not scary anymore. And that's a huge help. So um, not to mention Nunchuck continues to add more features. And, and they're, again, I think they're really focused on, on being really good at a particular thing. And, uh, and that's a great thing to see. So I, I think this is a, a kind of a huge leap forward and, and uh, again, kind of proof that people are coming up with solutions that are less and less dependent on giving up your information and um, entirely trusting third parties with custody and things like that. Um, no more. So kudos to Nunchuck. I'm going to tip my hat to you guys. Uh, uh, you know, I was a fan before, but happy to see this latest offering. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton in getting this content in front of more eyeballs. Um, be sure to let me know what you thought of everything in the comments down below as well. Now, if you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. CoinKite, Start9, Hoddle Hoddle, and PrivacyPros.io. Also, if you need a little bit extra assistance, whether it be for hardware setup, self-custody, nodes, lightning, all that kind of stuff, you can hit me up for one-on-one -on -one consultations and education sessions via my website, btcsessions.ca. Jump over there, book me for a time, and I'll see you there. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin tip at my strike page, strike.me slash BTC sessions. You don't need strike to use it. You just head there, you type in any amount you want, hit the tip button, you will see a lightning invoice, or if you prefer, tap the arrow to the right, you'll see a regular Bitcoin QR code. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.